Hi friends, we are starting off today with a new series about production control in Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation. And uh, we re very recently completed our series regarding warehouse management and we have covered almost all the basic topics or the basic functionalities available in WMS. So if you want, please do check out the same, right? And many of the our friends have requested for production control. So that's the reason we are starting off with production control today, right? So in this series, we will be covering the objective, I would say, is to cover the basics of production control. First of all, why, why, what are the types of modes of production we have and how D365 will help us to configure those modes of production. What are the production strategies which we can follow and um, how to create, uh, create and perform a discrete manufacturing process. So that's what we are going to see in this entire series. So we will not be primarily covering about uh, a Kanban or a process manufacturing. But anyway, I will explain you in detail about how how uh, we will be taking up what is discrete manufacturing, what is process manufacturing, what is lean manufacturing, all the basics we will cover. But for the purpose of this series, we will be primarily touching upon discrete manufacturing, right? So let's get into the today's episode number one. So for the purpose of this video, I've just made a short presentation. So first of all, uh, this series, we are starting off with episode number one, which is completely related to production control. And uh, the agenda is primarily, I will explain you what is the episode plan. So I thought uh, from the beginning of the episode itself to give you an idea, what is the plan of the series so that you will get an understanding about so that you can um, click and view the appropriate videos, which is relevant for you. So we'll see the episode plan and what is primarily a production order because the freshers who are joining, who are new to Dynamics 365 should be able to understand what is a production order, what are the different types of production modes. So even though if you are not experienced as a functional consultant, so you should be able to get understanding of the production after watching this complete series. And also at last we will see in this episode, what is a production order life cycle, right? So. So like I said, this is the episode uh, plan which we are actually trying to, which I actually trying to um, do in this series. So starting off with the introduction, introduction session, this is the episode number one. And then slowly we'll take it up with what are the production strategies and terminologies. And then we'll quickly get into the configuration aspect of what is a bomb, what is a route, what is the resources, uh, the calendars, parameters. And slowly we'll also try to explore execution of a production order and what are the various costing techniques which we need to assign to the resource root and bomb using the calculation group and resource groups. So that also we will see. And also we will try to cover the subcontracting process. Uh, so let's say some of the operations you are doing using a sub subcontracting vendor, how do you perform it and how do you inbound the material? So that's also we will see. And then in the episode number 13, we will try to understand about the basics of costing sheet because as a, um, as a beginner or as a, um, as a functional consultant, you should also need to understand not only about the process, but also how to do the costing analysis and the costing sheet. Uh, so I won't say this is completely related to finance, but uh, as a functional consultant in SEM, you should also be aware of what are the costing sheet functionalities and uh, what are the costing techniques. So we'll also cover that. And last, at last, by episode 14 and 15, we'll quickly wrap up by checking out the inquiries, reports, and the workspaces which are available in the production control. And then we will quickly sign off. So this is the complete episode plan which we have. And as we progress, we may, there may be some changes depending upon the time and the need for any particular topic. So so as of now, this is the 15 episode series which we are planning, right? So if you want to get regular updates, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification icon. And also, if you are using LinkedIn, make sure that you follow my profile so that you get uh, get notified whenever I post article related to on this series right so let's get into the next slide so starting off with like i said production so production first of all is also known as the production life cycle is a process um, basically consists of a specific step-by-step -step process that is required to complete the manufacture of an item whether you manufacture a car or laptop or a, a furniture or a fabric a shirt whatever it is it can it has a series of steps and operations right and also you have a raw material um, which is getting consumed so how do we achieve these step-by-step -step processes is basically defined is the definition for the production life cycle is concerned 
and in the testify the production control module is linked to other modules also like product information management general ledger inventory management warehouse management so production control is is not just uh, just a standalone module but it is also interlinked to the other modules and the functionalities which are used in the other modules also basically if you are coming from a production background uh, um, basically i start off my career as a production engineer so the four m's of production are basically man method material and mission man and machine comes under resources we will get into the uh, deep, deeper discussion about what are the resources what is a route what is a bomb all these we'll get into as we progress in the series but to give an idea to you these are the four m's of production which are very very important so man man the per, the person who is performing the operation method method basically is is tagged using the route what are the operations which is getting performed and machine the machine is basically the 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 it can be a tool it can be a, a complex uh, machine by itself or whatever it is using which you perform the the man is performs man performs a certain operation so what is the machine which the man uses and then the material of course uh, in, in order to perform any specific production operation you need a material right so that is getting configured in the bomb the bill of materials don't worry if you are completely new to these terms do not worry about it you will very very soon as you progress in the series you will understand all these uh, terminologies and how to configure these in d365 right so basically i just want to tell you that four m's of the production are key for following the specific steps to complete the manufacture of the item so let's get into some of the important concepts in, in the production order modes so first of all in d365 using the functionality of production control you will be able to perform any of the following four production order modes it can be a discrete manufacturing production order or it can be for process manufacturing for batch orders or you can do lean manufacturing for kanban orders or you can also do shop, job shop manufacturing in case of project orders so what are what is the difference actually so production order is used to produce specific product or product variant in a given quantity it can be like a laptop or a shirt or a, a mobile phone so where you have a set of bill of materials and routes assigned to it so for example if uh, if i look at this laptop as an fg item fg which stands for finished good anyway we will take it up the terminologies in the next session but uh, fg stands for finished good if this laptop is considered as a finished good this can be broken down into components i can broken i can broke down this into its keyboard its mouse pad its screen or a processor or a ram rom i can basically broke down this uh, fg into its components right so that's where the concept of discrete manufacturing comes into picture so we can this we can do a discrete manufacturing where the fg can be broken down into components so that is the mode number one and number two is the production and the batch orders batch orders are basically the process manufacturing this order type is used for process industries like your uh, your pharmaceutical industries or uh, you are um, um, in case of um, chemical manufacturing industries where discrete you have discrete processes so basically that you have the concept of co-product or by-product based on the formula which is used here we don't have a bomb here we have a formula in case of discrete manufacturing we have a bomb and a root here we will have a formula let's say you manufacture a maple syrup the maple syrup can have a, um, a sugar syrup or maple or sugar additives or coloring agents so this comes in a certain formula right it can be like 10 percent of, of sugar additive or or 20 percent of coloring agent so it comes with a specific formula and uh, based on the formula and combination if there are some changes this complete maple syrup can give you a different kind of uh, fg finish good item and basically the point not to be noted is fg cannot be broken down into components once this maple syrup is made i cannot pull out the sugar or the additive or the maple syrup separately unlike when we manufacture a laptop or a car we can pull out the individual components but in case of batch orders or process manufacturing we cannot pull out the pull out the fg or break down the fg into its components so in those cases we primarily use process manufacturing so that is also doable with dynamics 365 
and third mode of uh, production is the Kanban which is basically used to maximize productivity and minimize the waste. Kanban is basically used the lean manufacturing used primarily in automotive industry where uh, where they it's basically comes from Toyota quality order management where they want to perform want to perform and maximize the productivity but minimize the waste uh, so so in those cases a Kanban is used where uh, you have a repetitive production process let's say you have a same variant of car that is getting produced in a, in a massive quantity with a lot of bombs interlinked to each other and the sub bombs are available so in those cases you use a lean manufacturing technique and last i would say is a uh, project order job shop manufacturing um, basically in this case this kind of type of order uh, item is produced is basically custom and or has a large number of steps to complete so i can give you an example like in case of uh, maybe bespoke machinery or um, heavy health equipments where you have uh, custom requirements uh, based on the based on the construction projects or uh, um, or maybe a metro rail projects where you have a uh, heavy equipments which you generally see on the road right so where you have large number of steps to complete in order to track all those large number of steps in those cases a project order is used you may require a complex uh, complex calculation scenarios in those cases and uh, that's why our return is used primarily in heavy machinery production also right so these are the different production order modes which are available in d365 and uh, generally these are the also the production order modes which are generally followed and uh, most of the cases it will be a production order batch order or Kanban order but uh, like i said um, in this episode in this series of production control we will be primarily looking into the discrete manufacturing and we will not be covering the batch order or Kanban or production order probably a separate series is actually required in order to complete the batch order Kanban or production order also like i written over here you can also have multi-mode manufacturing is also possible let's say you do a production order and done then uh, provide a semi-finished good and using that semi-finished good you want to uh, use it in a process manufacturing so sometimes based on your production strategy you can ha have a mix of these uh, production order modes also so multi-mode manufacturing is also possible depending upon your business production strategies so which is sometimes sometimes that also um, makes sense in terms of cost effectiveness right so let's get into the next slide so like i said uh, so when we do this production order modes basically it follows a certain set of processes in case of discrete manufacturing so it starts off with the production order creation and then we do an estimation and after the estimation we release the production orders to the shop floor and once it is released the production order gets started in the shop floor the person uh, who is actually performing the production and then uh, once the production is comp started and uh, completed the the person has to report the production address raf which stands for report as finished so once it is report as finished you have the finished good which is physically updated in your inventory and once the production order is entered then the fish finished good inventory is financially updated i know this might sound uh, little hard for you if you are if you are very new to dynamics 365 but uh, i will also quickly tell you as we get into the system you will be able to understand what are all these statuses what exactly it means when and it is fg is physically updated what it exactly means when it is financially updated right so these are all primarily the statuses which will be covered as we get into the production order series so like i said uh, created you may pass this video to get a quick idea about uh, what are the each and every status mean but uh, I, let me tell you created is the status which is which is actually assigned when you actually created manually a production order or it is created based on the uh, master planning and um, also estimate is happens when you want to estimate how much cost the, the actual raw material or the resources is actually going to put in the inventory transactions you want to make an estimate before starting the production order you, you need to do estimation and uh, generally the release is used when you use the advanced warehouse management processes using which uh, the, the person who is sitting in a maybe the production manager who actually approves or releases the material for production uh, for starting of the production so once the release the once the production orders are released only the released orders the production shop floor people will take it up and uh, start producing the material for uh, completing the fg 
and once they start they they have to of course they need to complete the report has finished once the report has finished is done the finished goods are completed and updated in the inventory and after that you are uh, you are confirming the system that the production order is ended before the production or production and the actual cost are calculated for the quantity that was produced so first we are estimating how much cost which is going to be um, going to be calculated for this particular production order and then at last we are getting the actual cost based on the running average cost or the item price based on the configuration which we have uh, in the system so we'll also discuss about that as we progress in this particular episode so overall this is the production order life cycle statuses that we have in this um, as far as the production order is concerned so let me quickly tell you the let me try also try to get into the system uh, so like i said uh, in d testify from the home page you can get into production control module so we will quickly see what are the various production orders so if i get into all production order i just want to show you um, what are all the statuses which we have in the production order so the statuses can be um, the following actually scheduled scheduled actually i have not discussed about scheduled because scheduled uh, we are not going to talk about job scheduling in this series so that's why i have skipped the scheduling but otherwise generally the process like i said estimate release start report has finished and ended so you can also at any point in time you can reset the status we will also see how to do a resetting of the status um, but uh, generally these are all the status and the remaining status remaining status actually means the what is the subsequent uh, action which need to be performed in the production right so these are the various uh, statuses which are available in production control so we will also see this but i uh, right now it may sound little odd but uh, i just first in the first couple of episodes i just want you to understand the basics of production order so we saw what is exactly a production order is what are the different modes of the production order and uh, what are all the various states or statuses of the production order uh, so with of that we will next in the next episode we will quickly get into the production order strategies and terminologies and from that it will be easy for you to understand some of the basic terminologies and how to take it up um, when we talk about bomb and route configurations so if you want to get regular updates make sure that you follow my profile in youtube shriram sirashankar d3 sway talks or you can also follow my profile in linkedin which is shriram sirashankar right so hope you enjoyed this video please do share your thoughts in comment section i'll see you soon in episode number 2 thank you